Hey, what's up everybody? If you have a dream of living on Bali or chasing wild returns on your money, watch this video because today I'm sharing the ins and outs of building on Bali, A to Z. Hi, my name is Dani Igdera Wan. This is the first video where I'm talking into a camera. It is a bit weird, but let's give it a try. My parents are Indonesian and moved to the Netherlands where I was born and raised. They took me back to Indonesia during summer holidays. Jakarta, Jogja and Bali were all the places that we always went to. Now I have children of my own and try to show them the island life as much as I can. I have been dreaming of building a home on Bali and now it's finally happening. And I'm documenting this for everybody who has the same dream. Later in the video I will share the designs that we are building and what my investment plan is. Why Bali? Personally, Bali is my second home. I have a lot of family there and it's just an incredible island. There are many non-Indonesian people that have fallen in love with the island as well. Foodies, yogis, surfers, beach and nature lovers. For every type of person there is something to be found. And Bali is a cultural treasure that sets apart from anywhere else. It's a fusion of arts, incredible food, sweet people, rituals and religious traditions passed down through generations. And the sun shines all year long. It's truly an all-you-can-tan island. Yes, on some places the traffic is insane and on some places the infrastructure is not built well. Some places are overcrowded. All true, but Bali is big and has got a lot more to offer than those particular places. There's many places where you can relax and see the real Bali. I chose to build our villa in central Bali, in the south of Ubud that is called Singapadu, which translates to solid lion. Ubud is known as the cultural center and the green part of Bali. It's got something magical where I always feel when I'm there. In Bali there are three ways to get your dream home. The first option is buying it straight from an agent. This method involves selecting a home from an inventory offered by real estate agents. It's like picking an item off the shelf. The advantage here is the variety of options available. In Indonesia you have to pay the entire purchase amount upfront. As a non-Indonesian, getting a mortgage in Indonesia is not an option. Surprisingly, this approach isn't widely adopted by the locals either. The interest of the mortgage is very high. The second option is buying an off-plan villa. This route involves purchasing a property that's still in the planning stages, but the land is already picked out by the developer. Essentially, you're acquiring the designs, the renders and the land itself, but the physical construction of the building hasn't started yet. The appeal of this option lies in the flexibility. Buyers often have the opportunity to customize the aspects of the villa according to their preferences. And there's usually a cost saving aspect compared to buying a ready made villa. However, it's essential to stay close to the project as there are risks involved. These include the need to trust the constructor, as well as ensuring the validity of the land ownership. Payments are usually made in stages. For instance, when the land agreement is signed, when the land is being prepared, when the foundation is done, when the walls and the roof are installed and so on. It all depends on what you agree on with your constructor. The third option is to building it from scratch. For those seeking complete autonomy and creative control on their property, building from scratch is the ultimate choice. This involves acquiring a plot of land and overseeing the entire construction process from design to completion. Although it's fun to do, it requires dedication, effort and resources. The way I am building our villa is a mix of option 2 and 3. I fell in love with a design from an architect but had a vision of having something similar on a piece of land that borders a green zone. That is a zone where it is not allowed to build on because it's meant to do agriculture. So in my dream I always have a few on the rice field. When it comes to land ownership, buyers can choose to go either from a leasehold or a freehold arrangement. Leasehold involves leasing the land for a fixed time period. It is a very common thing to do for non-Indonesian people because it's very easy and it's still very profitable. Terms typically range from 25 to 35 years with the option to extend. 
Our freehold ownership, where the land is purchased for an unlimited time, is only available for people with an Indonesian nationality. For other people, there is also an option to buy it freehold, but it requires a few things like starting a business and also collaborating with local people. And still, this option got a limited time period. With a few extensions, the land ownership is still a maximum of 80 years. So not forever. But hey, I think it's only fair to return the land to the original owners once you have done some good business on Bali. Remember that the most investors earn their money back in around 6 years. I myself exchanged my Indonesian passport to a Dutch passport when I was 18. Back then it made more sense. So I am leasing the villa as well. Building on Bali A to Z. Basically, these are the steps that you have to take to build a villa in Bali. The first thing is finding the right team, an architect who has the designs and can make adjustments to your wishes. A lawyer who checks if everybody involved in the project works legit. For instance, is the seller the actual person that is in the contract and the rightful owner of the land? Does he got outstanding debts? And so on. A notary who makes all the contracts between all parties. A trustable constructor who can actually build the design that the architect made. And an interior designer who can design and fix the interior when the villa is built. I am working with someone that is in contact with all team members needed. It is very important for me because I'm not always around. The next step is to search and find land. Finding suitable size land in Bali can be challenging due to its limited availability and high demand. I have seen many areas developing to become very popular to become very overcrowded. Each area has its own price. In December 2023, I fell in love with a piece of land where I visualized to have our villa built. It was perfect, although it was a bit bigger than I had in mind. The landowners and I had a great connection and we agreed on the price. We were ready to start the process and began that by doing a ceremony where we asked the Balinese gods for a blessing and to keep the bad spirits away. From that point on it went very fast as we did a soil test to measure the land quality and see what kind of foundation that we need. We hired a topographer who measured each tree and each centimeter and draw it on a map so we could see which trees to cut and which ones to keep and which ones to move. Mid-January 2024 the trees were getting cut. First, the landowners picked out and cut the trees themselves to make other things with it. After that, the big machines got to work and removed all the big chunks. This piece of land is about 1000 square meters and has room for four similar villas. Two villas are going to be on the lower end, close to the rice fields, and two are going to be built on a higher level. This is what a landscaper does. At this moment, they are building walls around the land so the structure is solid. Meanwhile, the architect is adjusting the design to the measurements of the land. In the next period, the foundation is getting done. After that, the construction of the actual building is going to start. In a later period, we organized to get a PPG of permit. That is a permit that you have to have if you want to build on Bali. Maybe it's a bit strange to apply for that where you're already building, but that's a very common thing on Bali. This process will take about 10 months from start to end, from A to Z. So that's pretty quick. I will make more videos of the process in the future, as well as videos about other interesting stuff to do on Bali, especially in this area where the villa is getting built. I try to show you the more cultural side of Bali. These are the designs I fell in love with. So our villa is going to be almost the same with a few adjustments because our land is a little bit bigger than the renders that you see here. Also the building itself is going to be a little bit bigger. Where you see the pool is located in the render, in the future, that is going to be the garden. The pool is going to be where you see the wall right here. I especially wanted to build a villa where you can enjoy the view of the rice fields. So in this case, there will be no wall over here. Here is where you find me drink a cocktail from the pool looking at that direction. We are working on new renders, which I will show you in the next video. Why I do this? Besides it's a dream of having a villa on a number one tourist destination of Asia, it is a very good investment. People from all across the world are spending their holidays in Bali. In 2023, there were about 5 million tourists from abroad and about 10 million from other Indonesian islands. 
Pilas that you see in this design are priced at 235,000 euros including the lease of the land of 25 years. Let me show you the daily rental prices of other similar villas in Ubud. So, entire home, two bedrooms. Uh, super weird because I instantly see three bedroom villas as well. But uh, let's check out this one. This is a two bedroom villa. Uh, also a luxury one with beautiful jungle views. Mm, they ask 237 euros a night. Let's see the occupancy rate. Oh, we're in February now. February is completely sold out. March still have three, no five uh, days open. April is pretty booked as well. Still a few days open. Pretty occupied. If the occupancy rate is 75% times 365 days is 273 days a year. If we charge a daily rental rate of 220 euros a night, that will result in a gross revenue of 60,060 euros per year. From that amount, you have to pay expenses for about 40%. This includes the taxes, utilities, staff, maintenance, and very important, a villa management company fee that does all the booking handling and all the hands-on stuff on the ground. That will resonate to 24,024 ,024 euros per year. So if we do a calculation here, 60,060 euros minus the expenses of 24,024 ,024 euros is a net income of 36,036 ,036 euros a year or 3,003 euros a month of passive income. The purchase amount is 235,000 euros and you can have your money back in about six and a half years. And of course, I don't have to pay rent for another Airbnb holiday home anymore when I'm in Bali. Where in the world can you get these kind of returns? If you have any questions, send me a DM on Instagram. And if you like this video and you want to be updated about building on Bali, hit the like and subscribe button. I'm looking forward to give you more insights in the future. Thank you for watching. Dani, a Bali Odyssey. Building on Bali, A to Z.